Next game we're talking about today is a big game that's been hitting up the Steam charts as of late, and that game is called Manor Lords. We were talking about it last podcast. And Manor Lords is a game developed by <laughs> Slavic Magic, and it's a feudal simulator, city builder, medieval city building game, essentially, that was made by one guy over the past roughly seven years. He's been working on it. It's in early access right now, and it's available to purchase for, I believe, 30 bucks is what I paid for it. It's on Steam, and in one day, it sold a million copies pretty damn good wow not gonna lie pretty damn good oh, that is impressive jesus yeah so this game launched at the end of april um and it uh is a uh, city builder that is uh the latest a long line of games traced back to like sim city um essentially so in this game you work on um overhead perspective kind of thing you build out road networks you place down buildings like houses and you know, settlements that like help to grow crops and like add food and lumber and this, that, whatever, and uh, and all that jazz. So basically, when you start the game, you pick one of three types of game modes, and one game mode is one where you're just building a city, okay. and then one game mode is building a city, but there's also other enemy factions or bandit camps in the area. Oh. So there's also a fighting game, like an Age of Empires kind of component to this game. And then there's another one that I believe is just like world domination, like super intense, like lots of fighting and killing. So I've been playing the one that doesn't have combat in it just to kind of get my bearings about what to do. Ooh, is the combat with other people or is just just combat it's, it's with just NPCs? NPCs? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. There's no uh, no co-op or multiplayer in this game. Okay. Um, so when you start out, you are randomly put into a map. Uh, the map is the same for everybody. Again, this is early access, so not all the features are in this game yet. It looks good. Yeah. But you start out, you find a, you have a map plot, and you need to start building um, houses and stuff to bring people in. So like Manners? Manners, oh, if you will, that's yes. That's weird. Yeah, that's for the boss, the big boss. You build a, a oh. manor for them. Big boss Brett. Because you're going to be a lord, yes. Yeah, exactly, big boss Brett. And uh, so whenever you like you start out, the first thing you want to do is basically build a storehouse and a granary because what you're essentially doing is collecting resources around the entire map. But in each look thing that you build stores a little bit of stuff, but it runs out really quick. Okay. So the storehouse and the granary is where your guys will take an ox and a cart to deliver it to the storehouse. And that's where they store all the food for everybody. Eventually, you can upgrade that to like hold more stuff. And then you start creating this supply chain of like people just running around families delivering stuff from point A to point B. And the whole game is set around the idea of families. Question. Yes. If you don't put a road down, do people just don't know what to do? It just takes longer. Oh. So the roads help them to help to expedite transportation. Gotcha. So if you yeah, why else do we have roads, Austin? Yeah. <laughs> I, th I didn't know they'd be like walking around like, we can't get no. over there. We can't get next door. All this grass is in the way. Damn it. Witch. No. Witch. <laughs> that would have been, been awesome. No, the uh, the people are actually like really, the, the AI in here are actually pretty smart for an early access game, but they will like go through and just like walk through the grass with their ox and cart. It just takes them like twice as long to get there. <clears throat> so putting the roads down and building the road network will help you out and this game is super organic in the development of it so like we're watching a video here you'll see you can like draw a road to go any path that you want we're yeah. not talking like grids like you would have in sim city we're building on like a block grid or whatever like you can build all kinds of curves you can have them follow tree lines you can build them uh, up on top hills and it naturally like forms the land to create the roads with that in mind and it's then Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say. And then um, whenever you're placing objects down, you have like four points, quadrants that you can connect the roads to. And that means you've created that road connection mm -hmm. into the the network, essentially. Uh, what were we going to ask? So I might be like jumping ahead of myself because you're still explaining the game. Is there any like environmental damage that can happen, like tornadoes? Huh. Or, like uh, Yes, but not tornadoes, really. I, that was just so, like, a far edge <clears> one. The That's big, Texas. the big, uh, the big feature of this game that I think is why it's pulling it for a lot of people beyond just like that. It's a beautiful game for one. It's really, really good looking, especially for a game that was made by one person. Um, and they have like a really just interesting like building system structure and growth of like resources wow. and stuff like that. The game is set up has seasons, four seasons. So as you progress through each season, 
different things will occur. So like crops, for example, are best planted at certain times of the year to have the best yields. When you have rain that comes down, Uh because it will rain every once in a while, the rain will damage your crops or your your stuff that hasn't been put in your storehouse. So if you haven't built a storehouse yet or you have stuff lying around, it can damage that stuff. Um, So you need to make sure you have the right stuff in place to protect your your gear. And then you get... um, uh, in the winter, of course, it snows. snows yeah. So everybody gets cold. So you need to make sure you have enough firewood so that people can like heat their houses. Or make sure you have your cattle in a fucking yeah. barn. Indoors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you have all that aspect in there. And so the game's units are all based on this idea of families. So you're not collecting, you're not building units, you're building families. So every family is like one to usually like a husband, a wife, and like a couple of kids or whatever. Incest. Yes, sure. <laughs> Um, and that's your that's your unit. <laughs> you basically, yeah, you don't get to go outside. Of so uh, you basically assign a family to a place. Okay. So every time you build a building, whether it be a storehouse, a granary, you can build a church. Um, the church helps you bring new people in. So the church kind of like builds favor in the community, and then it helps to bring new families in. And that's the only way you can like grow to like add more families. You can't just like pay to create a family. You have to grow your settlement which would invite there's a favorable rating to your area, your settlement that you've built. And if your fa- their rating gets above 50%, that's when families will start moving in over mm-hmm. a course of time. Like I think one a month at first and the higher your rating gets, it's like two a month and you can fast forward time. Of course so you can like move to like four X speed and just like have this stuff kind of process through real quick. Okay. Um, but in order to have those families, you also have to have homes to put them in. So that's where this idea of burrage, burrage plots comes into play. So burgage plots is kind of like the the ecosystem of the whole entire kind of like the the main crutch of the whole game. So you're building houses and in most games you build a house and that just like increases your population. And this one you must have a house before people will come to your land. So you have to have home for them to live in before they will move in because they're not going to move into a place and be homeless, right? So you build this land, but what's kind of cool is every single house that you build, if you build it with enough land space cuz like most of the buildings that you build, you just they have a fixed grid that you lay on the onto the the ground. With the uh, the buildings, you build a plot line, and you can like literally draw a four set like four quadrants to form and shape into an area that you want it to go. And the bigger the grid grid is, you'll have this like backyard essentially yep. that can be used as secondary resource gathering for that family and that house. So, for example, like one house can have be raising chickens in the backyard or planting vegetables in the backyard. And that contributes to the overall resources of the village. And then you set up a marketplace where enough houses happen. They go to the market to sell their goods to the other families in the Mm. neighborhood. And then that's how you level up your land is by having enough food stalls in the market and then having a church and having a tavern. So tavern for entertainment, uh, a church for like religion and then food and does water help, and like, clothing. Uh, the church and the tavern, does that help boost like a morale system for mm-hmm. your, your people so they can work better? Or, you know, yeah, they, it makes them happier and stuff like that, which will encourage, that'll make your approval rating go up, which then lets you have new families move in. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So do families get sick and die or have like dysentery? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so I haven't experienced that yet. Mm-hmm. Um, they get upset and they do tell you like there's a little counter up in the top corner that basically there's not individualized death really Mm -hmm. what's instead going to happen is you have a certain threshold of when you're going to run out of food and like like uh firewood fuel food and fuel are the two main sources that will kill your settlement okay so there's a little barrel up in the top bar that basically says you have x months until everybody's dead so, so it's, it's, like, just, it's all or none. Basically all or none, yeah. Know, this game would be cool if it was like a, a open world co-op game where you can trade with other people that's <clears> online. It might be at that'd some be point. Fucking, that'd be it's cool. still early access. Yeah. And it's 40 bucks, by the way. Not 40? 40? Yeah. Okay. On Steam. Yeah. Still not bad, though. Free, um, free on the Game Pass? Uh Oh, shit, yeah. Thank you for telling me. Yeah, I was like, I think it's, it's free on, on the Game, game Pass. Pass. Yes, yeah. So I actually bought the game. Oh, and then I nice. refunded it because I, I didn't realize it was on Game Pass. <laughs> How so, dare you serve Fred. my money? I know, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but hey, hey, Game's Game good, Pass is giving them, that good. Game Pass <laughs> give them money, you know? Like, hey, that's what it is. Can you burn witches at the stake? <clears throat> uh, no. Probably not, not yet. That. No. <laughs> not no. Yet. Hopefully when October rolls around, they come out with like a Halloween <laughs> thing. <That'd be> um, cool. <laughs> but 
the the thing that's been most fascinating to me for this game is that the um just the the building system is so so good yeah it looks like they did such a good job at so like i built a settlement where i learned very quickly that like i need to have all my houses like real close together and so everybody can kind of like wander around because basically like every house has like a set number of requirements have to be met to level it up okay and the proximity of the other houses informs like they share resources to contribute to that ranking system to move them up so if you have like two houses here and then two houses way over there they can't support each other and therefore it takes longer to rank them up until you build more homes around them. Okay. So you like kind of, you build these like, you know, houses together, you build entertainment together. Um, you're cutting down trees, but you have to build two different types of camps. So one's a logging camp that just cuts down logs. But what's also really cool about this game is like you're cutting down logs. You're also like literally getting rid of wood. Right. Yeah. And you have to then spread out, but you can build a another. Um, oh, I think it's called a forager's hut or something. But you can build another group that you assign a family to that will replant trees, so oh, that so you can kind of replenish the area. Um, you have farmland that you build out, and the farmland's like big crops and stuff. Yeah, and farmland gets as deep into the system of like you have to rotate your crops, or else you're going to ruin your soil. Gotcha. So every you can set like every season. Oh, I want to put this like type of crop, yeah. this type of crop. But you just set it and forget it, okay. and then it just does its thing. And then you can have like your land like take a season off and okay. not produce any crop anymore. And then there's there is a trade system with the other factions in the group, the AI faction. So mm-hmm. once you build your settlement up, you build a trade center that's off the main oh. what they call King's Road. Yeah, and King's Road's the main road that comes close enough to your property. Yeah, and there you can then decide I'm going to sell you know, um, what my excess resources are. So I got a shit ton of wood in my, my, my property. Yeah. So I'm going to start selling wood off to make money to then use that money to buy ox and buy, you know, different things through the trade network and stuff like that. I gotcha. So you did say you were doing the building mode, but there is a mode where people can come and attack your village. Is that yep. what you were getting yep. at with that? Yeah. Okay, have you, have you played that mode? I haven't played it yet, but I've watched a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And the way that kind of works is that scary. you're instead of do I <laughs> raid scary <laughs> yeah right um, so you'll be it's not super intense yet um, but there's so there's this giant map and that you're playing in and you, if you zoom out you can see the whole entire overview yeah, map and all that. the different territories mm-hmm. and eventually once you like kind of build up and take advantage of your area you can go and claim other oh, regions you can, you can invade and you can invade when yeah, you're playing the regular one you go and invade and you claim an area and then you build a camp there and just start building your city and there's other resources you can like capitalize on and then you trade between your two cities to share those resources but in the combat combat one there are other enemy factions or not enemy factions but just other settlements in the area and then what they'll do is occasionally they'll send out bandit can't like bandit to do the um, same thing that parties you're basically doing. and they won't always attack you. But yeah, they're looking around to also find resources. So they'll come by. Sometimes they'll attack. Sometimes they won't. But you can build an army. And that's where it kind of becomes like a little like Rome Total War or Age of Empires where you like you build armies out and you also eventually get to the point where you can start producing um, if you're doing the combat scenario, you produce weapons and then you can trade weapons with other settlements and stuff like that as well wow. okay. and build that whole kind of infrastructure trade system out but in the building mode that you're doing you can't do that or you can and it's there's just easier. no enemy factions in there there's no enemy factions but you yeah. still can take over someone's i can take over now enough you can still take over another like territory there's just there's not a camp there it's just it's, it's just, just empty land it's oh, just all a bunch of land to explore and okay. take over you know and there's wild animals out there, so you can set up like a hunting base or whatever. And then that person, every time you like set up a base, you assign a family to it, mm-hmm. and then they just do their shit. You don't have to just set it and forget, it, and they okay. just go and like start hunting or whatever. So I also noticed that you can you can fast forward time. Yep. So you like if you <clears> set up if you're trying to build something, you can just fast forward and let. It, is is there a time limit to do that, or is it just like no? You, you just, just run it for like literally. Sometimes I'll just sit there and just like run it on four X and just have it just, just have like it fast forwarding because I'm building a bunch of shit and I just want them to start like build, 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 build and fucking just like Iron do Man the thing. Just fucking grab and yeah. Shit and, just yeah. Yeah. and there's okay. even like a lot of depth into this. Like you'll notice in some of these videos, there's like a 
overlays that come up when you start building. So for example, when you build a house, you have to also have a well to support the houses. Of course. So when you go into the uh, the build mode, you can look at where the underground underground water sources are. Uh-huh. You got to make sure you're building your house as close to underground water so you can build your well and get water. And then there's also fertility um, levels of Ooh. different parts of the property that lets you know like how fertile the ground is, not that kind of fertility. Uh, <laughs> how fertile the ground is for certain types of crops. Okay. So when Eat you that see ground. that ground, that you know, ground, baby. <laughs> you got to you can kind of plan out really early of like where do I want to build my shit to make sure that I'm getting the best benefit out of like my your flax, your barley, your rye, etc. Does know, the it best seem yield. like it's <clears throat> too much management? No. No. It's all super easy. Like once you understand the concepts, like there's, I mean, like four main things. You're doing resource gathering. You're doing um, like building. You're doing trade stuff. And that's about it. And then storage, you know. So like once you kind of get in the rhythm, like it's kind of the same stuff. But the fun of it for me is just like designing your layout and optimizing like where to put stuff. Certain things when you place it down, you can move it for free. So if you like put a spot in the wrong place, you can just like click to move it and just move it somewhere else and it'll just reposition it. And it works well where it like, you know, fits everything nicely into the terrain so that like it will cut down trees for you when you like place it on a part of a building and um, kind of adjust it to kind of fit in the environment. And um, yeah, it's a really neat whole concept. And the other cool thing here that I thought was just like a weird like, I can't believe this thing exists, is so you're, you're a lord that oversees this whole entire property right and eventually build a manor for your yourself right um there's a lord mode that if you want to just like see what your settlement's like you click a button and you become a third person character on the ground you can walk around your whole entire town like in third person and i was like i mean it's like you don't do anything with it you kind of like clip through buildings sometimes or whatever the fact that that exists and i can like literally walk past my villagers like my families that are like you know, doing, doing crops man, like it it's feels, incredibly it detailed more, yeah. <laughs> they go like my lord my yeah lord. they do talk they actually oh, communicate wow. and stuff like yeah. that and i was like there's dialogue yeah. like voice acting and stuff and i was it like more immersed yeah yeah yes. it's really cool you go in combat as your lord then that would be hopefully that's something they i don't think you can fight but damn that'd yeah be like yeah. take the army with you yeah yeah go attack go yeah attack so would i like this do you think i would like this brit i don't think so Okay. Reason being, I think it's like it's so city builder focused. Okay. I think there's not enough like combaty stuff that I think would like really hook you. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is kind of cool. We we play games like this before. Yeah. I mean, there, maybe. there have been like more co- like uh um. Dang it! What's that one game where you start as a cell and you move up to like actually building society and stuff? Oh, spore. Spore. Yeah. Yes. We've done something like that before. Yeah, that's but there, true. But there is combat in that as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's this is so what what I have learned is like I've played probably five or five or six hours of this game so far. It's like you get to a point where you've done the things. Like mm-hmm. there's I think there's a cap in this game right now of like I don't know, I'd say like 10, 12 hours or something like that. And you're mm-hmm. like, you've kind of done all that's here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is fine. You know, there's definitely like some benefit in like replayability, which is like re-optimizing a new city yeah. and a new area. And then of course, trying out the bandit camps and whatnot. But um, there's only so much stuff in here, which for me is actually nice because it's, it's approachable enough to understand what I'm doing and kind of get a bearing of the concepts. But I'm excited to see kind of where they take it beyond this. They have a really great concept here. I mean, the game looks beautiful. It runs great. Um, I had a crash on me actually once, but it was just one crash and that was it. And it was because I was, I was also capturing footage at the same oh, time. Okay. So I think that was the, that was the, the effect, issue. but it looks, um, it looks phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, uh, let me see the early access wise, like what they're planning to do with this game going forward is, um, the full version of the game is planned to have additional content influenced by community feedback. The structure and major mechanics of the game are already present. Now they also plan to conduct additional polishing, um. Yeah. So actually, they don't really say as much as I thought they would in what they're <laughs> going to do to it. But I could see them definitely expanding the combat component to it. I could see them adding a co-op feature. Yeah. I think it'd be really fun to like have us build multiple settlements in here. I think it'd yes. be cool with a co-op, and you can trade with that person. Yeah. And stuff. No combat stuff, but like you know, maybe there's almost like Catan. You know, where I I'm like 
on a wood area and the other person's on like a good brick farming area and we need to communicate with each other and do a decent trade back and forth. Mm-hmm. I think that would be cool. You yeah. probably do it in PCs, honestly. Well, like, yeah, you but probably don't need I think it'll people. be more entertaining to argue right. back and forth right. with another person. <clears throat> On like, Dude, if they trading. can make that like Catan like where you have to win the, re- I don't know, how, whatever. Yeah. You do to win, but that'd oh, be kind of cool. Win. Oh, but I was like, thinking about winning. I was just thinking about like, <laughs> gotta make it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, a battle if for the you best. Get into an argument, then yeah, you go into battle. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm raiding your town now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I totally fucking <clears throat> raid his town. <laughs> you raid my town? Oh, I'll do anything Oh, you're mean, about power. dude. Raid yeah. the village. I'll, yep. Send yeah. spies in and stuff. Get <laughs> fucking poison the grain. I can. My whole settlement can be shitty as fuck, but I'll still fuck with his place. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like in StarCraft, where you just send in your bots. Mm-hmm. You build all the bots and send it in and destroy everything. Yeah. The other thing that's really cool is roads are free, so you oh, can just nice. build whatever the fuck you want to do with all the roads, which is really nice. Um, so a lot of times, like I'll like kind of build out like my like road plan first, and then start your, building stuff in. You need to pull it up. I want to. Yeah. I want to like see what because I can see how your brain. Yeah. How you operate. Yeah. Fucking yeah, you'll see <laughs> straight, lines. straight lines. No, it's, it's actually pretty good. Out. I got I got like a main city that's kind of formed around this like open space between a bunch of trees, yeah. and then down to the south, I have all my logging and like logging camps, yeah. and then I have ore or uh, wood or rock and clay being developed on the other side of the city, and then further out is like between there and the main King's Road is a whole bunch of farmland, mm-hmm. and then at King's Road, I have my trading stuff and then my berries for berry farming was like way off in the fucking woods so i got a big ass road that you have to go all the way over there where i got one family that's just like <laughs> isolated out there collecting berries seasonally and doing their thing so um yeah i mean it's a fun game like austin said it's on game pass which is awesome so i mean if you have game pass on pc i mean it doesn't cost you anything extra to play otherwise it's like i guess 40 bucks so um support indie devs now yeah. more than ever I think it's really, really worth it. I mean, because we were talking about the last podcast about like you know any Everybody's games and stuff like game. that, and it's raving about it. I it's, can see why. Yeah, it's it's a great, solid, well produced game. Like I have very little issues with it. It's just designed really, really well. Yeah. Almost one hundred seventy five thousand players at its peak. It's pretty huge. It's come down, but. Not as far as he gets thirty nine. Yeah, there's yeah, Suicide Squad <laughs> <laughs> by a long shot. <laughs> This isn't my style of <coughs> gameplay. I, I I'll get bored of this easily, yeah. but it looks great. Yeah, I feel like I could play like a session. No. It's also yeah, build a city and then I'll be done with it. In a weird way, it's like kind of cozy, even though you're oh, like yeah. worried about your people like dying and shit like that. But but it's it's it is kind of cozy and just like building because it's so quick to like you just build a bunch of shit and then fast forward and just like watch it grow. Yeah, and then let it kind of move through. So oh, cool it's beans. good. Yeah. Check it out, y'all. If you like a city builder games, this is highly recommended for city builders. Still light in content, but definitely a good 10, 15 hour experience um, with a good amount of replayability. 